my internet. Sorry, my broadcast keeps getting interrupted. Hold on a second. I got to plug my phone charger in because this stuff eats my battery up. Even though I got full battery, it eats it up quick. So I got someone on the feed. All right, man. So today we're going to talk about the nuts and bolts of the operation. Right, I'm trying to get the thing uh, leaning correctly, so I'm going to hold the phone. All right, y'all. You're on my daughter's little mini chair. So. It's a rain day. There's not much we can do. We're at a stalemate. What are you guys doing for your business? Um, so let me grab my paperwork. I want to show you something I broke down. So I broke down this this over the weekend, if you can see that. This is just breaking down some numbers, trying to figure out the goal. So 20K a month. So 20K each month, 5K a week, 1K. So say we work eight to 5 p.m. And I put, I gave three options, paying an employee $12 an hour, $15 an hour, or $20 an hour and how much I would be paying them each day. I did times of five days a week, so 45 hours, so like five hours overtime. Did some math, dude, and uh, eye-opening. So basically what I broke, came down, with all my expenses and stuff, we have to do $200 a day, $200 a day, Monday through Friday, just to break even. That's kind of shitty. I mean, it could be worse, but it is kind of shitty. Get my water. So how do you do that? Especially when you got rain days during the week and shit. Um, yeah, man. So um, there's something I want to talk about. So do, do you guys know what goes into business? I want to know like where you guys are at in your business because man, I'm telling you right now, uh, yeah, you know, over the weekend, every weekend, I kind of like go through this mental shit show and I'm just like overwhelmed by everything that has to happen and what needs to be done and how to reach certain goals. It's overwhelming. I don't, I, I never thought of this stuff when I first started. <clears throat> I have a lot more respect for business owners and stuff knowing what I know now. So, How are you supposed to grow? How are you supposed to grow when you have this very high level, like a very high standard of how you do your work and you've built this badass company? Um, you know, we've got like between 15 and 20 five star reviews on Google, um, except now we have two one star reviews because that employee that I fired has been slandering me on Google. Fucking bullshit. He's such a pussy. And he like is so stupid. He thinks I don't know it's him, but whatever. So he's been slandering me on Google, which is whatever. They look they look like fake reviews, so I don't think they're gonna bother me. Anyway, what what are you supposed to do when you build such a high standard and you know and and you do things so over the top and your employees are rolling their eyes because you're you're nitpicking every little fine little detail with a fine tooth comb? How are you supposed to train them to live up to that standard when you're there, you're on the job site and you're still telling them that they're not doing stuff all the way, you know, and you can tell they're frustrated. It's like, I can't leave these people alone when they're frustrated on going above and beyond. It's very hard to find people who like to do the right thing when no one's looking, you know, it's your business. So you, 
you're of course going to do the right thing no matter what, because your name is on the line and you see the vision and stuff. But other people think it's kind of stupid and over the top being all fine detailed and stuff. So that's an issue. It's an issue that can be fixed. You got to find a good employee and it kind of is a rough, it's, it's hard to do, but it can be done. What up, Cody? Thanks for the comment. Um, so the next thing is say, and, you know, say like if you got a family and stuff, this is overwhelming as shit. I've got a two and a half year old daughter who's super daddy's girl, like cries when I leave and happy as hell when I show up. And it's, it's, it's almost bad. Like her mom is to be like, Ava, leave your dad alone. Like she's just stuck. And then, um, I've got a two month old, not even two months old. So it's super chaotic at home. And, uh, how are you supposed to, how are you supposed to do all this work? You're supposed to, you're supposed to go out and work, um, all day, busting your ass, doing thousand dollars a day, and then come home to your little shithole apartment because you're, you're busting your ass trying to get out. And then you got these kids like screaming and wanting daddy and stuff. And then, so you got to give them attention. You can't just come in and then ignore them. I've tried it. It's awful. It's hard. Um, but then, so you give them attention, take care of the, the kids, and you maybe help give a bath or feed them or what have you, and then put them to bed or something. But then it's like 8, eight or 9 p.m. Now you got to go back on the computer, send out all these estimates. Customers are irritated because, well, I've changed it up. Now I used to tell customers I'd have it to them by the end of the day. And in my head, by the end of the, the day, meant by midnight, because it's literally when I like, have to do this stuff. Um, so I started having customers like messaging me around like five or 6 PM, like asking where the estimate was. So I told them, you know, when I say end of the day, I literally mean by midnight tonight. So I actually say by midnight, you know, um, what was I saying? So yeah, you're literally like doing the paperwork, punching in all the customer's information, writing up estimates, sending them estimates. And that's, and, and that's not even talk, you know, that's not even talking about like going, going and doing estimates like sometimes you have to actually leave and go do estimates for a few hours and um so you do all this stuff and then dude by then it's like 11 or 12 p.m and then you're going to bed waking up at 6 a.m getting the trucks you know getting ready and 6 or 7 a.m dude it's crazy it's a lot you know and then like where do you squeeze in the time to create brochures and marketing material and um meet the community and chamber of commerce it's dude it's a lot it's a lot i just you know i hope if anyone's watching this i get mini or mickey if anyone's watching this and you're just about to start business or you haven't jumped into it yet just know man if you're like there's always something that needs to be done. So if you're like bored and like waiting for jobs, it's your fault. Just plain and simple. And uh, yeah, so I'm actually going to work on, I figured out all my expenses and stuff and like the goals I want to reach. And, you know, I'm getting kind of stressed out because dude, like it's, what is it? May. So you very much of a May. June, July, August. It's three months and then August comes. And I remember August last year was, it was awful. I mean, I was a fresh business and I didn't know what I was doing. I'm going to market better, but three months is nothing. I'm definitely not financially ahead enough to um, prepare for winter. I'm not, my equipment's all failing. Uh, my truck needs a fuel line all of a sudden. Now there's fuel leaking. Um, power washers acting funny the van suspension in the front end needs fixed my car needs fixed bills are still coming in it's just it's just all stuff that goes with business man so hmm trying to get to a point here trying to get to a point my point is 
slow day today. Well, it's thunderstorming and lightning and raining and there ain't shit I can do. I'm actually, I just kind of wanted to get on YouTube because I, I also want to build this channel up because um, I think it's awesome too. And I think it, it helps being in the community, like the online community. So I don't want to neglect this channel, but um, yeah, I'm actually going to start working on marketing stuff and probably just start going around. I'm waiting for my Vista print shirts to come in. And I don't know if it's just like an excuse in my head to like deter going and shaking hands with people and stuff. But um, I want to look clean as possible. I ordered some really nice shirts and they took them forever to come in. You know, because it looks kind of bad when you walk into places with like bleach and shirts and stuff. But I could probably just wear like a nice normal shirt and without the logo and it'd be fine. So that's what I'm probably going to do. Um, I got to create my own brochure, the information. Yeah, I got polyester for sure. Polyester is the way to go. These are cotton and they suck. You know, there's really no reason to waste money on the cheap cotton ones. Um, unless you like want all your employees and yourself to just have sweat stains all over. Are you planning on doing something different during the fall and winter months? We'll have to see how it goes. Um, I know last year I had to drive a garbage truck, but I didn't do shit in revenue last year. I did like not even 50K, probably like somewhere between 30 and 40. I did a lot of cash work. Probably half the work I did was cash. So actually the only amount of money on the books was like 20K. Um, but I'm not going to do that again this year. I don't think, um, I'm trying to look as professional as possible. I feel like doing cash looks grimy. Um, hmm. so I'm getting, I saw your post on, you got, I can't see where you said So you post power wash for you got some good info in there. What post? I don't even remember posting on there. I think I did post on there recently. I used to use it like crazy last year, but there's like a bad it, it kind of sucked about power washing resources. There's like the same three or four, maybe five names on there. And if you're on there a lot, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I just can't help but wonder what the hell they really do. Like, I want to see some, I don't know, like, they have so much time on there to just teach everybody about everything. It's like, what? Like, what are you actually doing with your life? You're just teaching people for free. I know it's kind of contradicting, but, um, you know, I just post a YouTube video here and there when I can. But these guys on the power washing resource literally sit on there and answer questions all day, every night. Like every night they're on there answering individual questions and shit. And it blows my mind. Um, and I, what I'm getting at is I got a lot of mixed information on there. A lot of opinions from different people and, and personalities clashing. And I was doing so many different methods to clean. And eventually I just said, screw this. I'm just doing it my way. And it worked out so much better. Once I, once I just like, stopped overthinking it and taking everything to heart, you know, and actually someone, my employee last year kind of helped me get over that. Cause I would like, I'd be like, no, they said, they said we got to do this and that and that. And he's like, dude, just spray the shit. We're fine. And we did and we're good. But I turned down thousands of dollars worth of like oxidation removal because they were talking so, so sketchy about oxidation removal. And you do have to be careful, but they're like, yeah, I just wish I wish I would have just tried it out. You know, it really isn't that hard. Um, check out Sign Today. Talk to Tim Fields. Have some great marketing. Go. So yeah, my the issue is, dude, marketing is marketing, and you got to pay the guy to design it. But I'm trying to like blow people's minds, so I'm trying to create. Here, let me read what I got for you. I actually tried to write a rough draft yesterday. I changed my pricing up on window cleaning. I don't know where I got my pricing ideas from last year, but not last year, but this year. 
I just jotted down some bogus pricing and it doesn't even make sense. Like I broke down the math and I was like, and this new pricing I got makes way more sense. So I'm finally going to start making some more money with window cleaning. So I'm trying to make these like badass brochures. Maybe they're like the, the pamphlets where you, the trifolds, maybe something like that, or maybe just like a, large you know just like a nice thick heavy piece of paper and you just hold hand them the whole piece of paper and it's like ooh. but i want it to have like some you know before and after pictures kind of the services we do maybe a little section where there's some pricing and like a little introduction of myself but dude it's like i got this badass guy that like does all my marketing stuff for me but he's so busy too that I'm like having trouble getting him to like really get into it and, and start. And it's partially my fault too. Like he'll say, send me what you want in it and I'll start working on it. And then I don't send him the stuff, but it's like, just start doing something, man. Let's get the wheels rolling. It don't gotta be perfect. Um, so yeah, I was like this, I want to put this in the in introduction, introduction, John Lang, the owner of Wally's Pro Services, is a father of two little girls. He's always wanted to create a business and change his family's, family's legacy and create employment opportunities for the community. With 100 bucks, John created some business cards and purchased about $50 worth of window cleaning supplies. After a long winter, he created a stable, repeating cleaning schedule full of small storefront business. His business has now grown to be known as the highest rated and referred window cleaning and power washing company in DeKalb County specializing in residential and commercial um, and then quotes I've always treated others how I would want someone to treat me or my family and that's why creating a high value service business was a perfect choice for me says John it's not about cleaning a window it's about creating a long-lasting relationship with every client and being the go-to company that can be trusted in your home that's what this is all about it's a rough draft but just like you know i've seen other businesses do similar stuff like that and I, I, what I, my where my head goes is i want to start going into businesses like um last year i was canvassing and i went into this business and it turned out to be like this large telecommunication office and the owner was so badass there or the manager or whatever i gave her some cheap ass quote to clean the windows and she was like, no, sweetheart, that's so cheap. We'll do it. How about 100? And then, and, then, and I was like, okay. And then, like, I got two more people that worked there to hire me to do their house washing and window cleaning. So I got, like, an extra 1000 bucks worth of work out of just – and that's what I want to do. So that's what I want to do is I want to start going into, like, bigger places. Like, I want to go back to that place and bring them some brochures and maybe some donuts and coffee and, like, be like, hey, you know, just saying what's up go in there and then uh go into like realtors offices with these badass brochures and be like hey i just wanted to you know bring them some donuts something just hey i wanted to introduce myself you know i just wanted to leave this here you know pass them around to the realtors and um yeah you know i just it's just constantly having to like meet people dude because business is going pretty good and honestly I'm not known as I should be. I don't do EDDM, which I need to do. It's another thing I need to get started. Uh, I do door hangers, yard signs, and just referrals, really. And it's like, I used to do Facebook marketing, but now Facebook changed its algorithm. So it's super confusing to do the Facebook posts and marketing anymore. Um, I can't even access it on my phone. So my Facebook business page has just gone down the tubes, which sucks. I really have to figure that out. But for whatever reason, you can't access it from the phone. You used to be able to just access it from your phone, and now it's, it's so garbage. Um, but, yeah, we would go live and stuff on the job site, and people would call. Dude, I got so much business last year from Facebook. You know, they changed it up. And, um, yeah, man, finding jobs is not hard. What's hard is just creating the marketing and actually going and doing it and just getting this stuff created. Like I said, man, I'm just having a really hard time getting the stuff created. I've been wanting to do this for a month now. And it's it's like, I don't know. But um, hmm. so what's on everyone's agenda today, you um, entrepreneurs? Are we going to – is it raining by you guys? Is that why you're in?
well, I don't know. My service might be bad. Out landscaping today. Very good. So, uh, yeah, guys, um, let's see what other notes I've got. Oh, do you guys do window cleaning? Check out my little rough drift. So I got, I don't think that's it, actually. See, my pricing on the window cleaning is, is pretty, uh, Solid. Ideas to create high value. Door hanger bag with branded items such as a receipt and info and notes explaining the job done today. Handwritten letters every week to each client. Small gifts for families with kids such as bubbles, coloring books, water guns, or stickers. Small gift for family with pets. So yeah, that's another thing I was thinking like having stocked stocked up little gift bags in the truck like a bin and say you go to a job site and there's like young kids there like two to five years old or something like that how cool would it be if you like you know like a little baggie like you get at the dentist or something it comes in a little door hanger bag and you had like some little toys in there like bubbles and a little coloring book or a water gun or stickers and you know all with your logo stuff on it so you're branding well offering value you'd be like hey you know or ask the parent if it's okay of course or whatever and be like hey i got a little present you know i just had this in the truck you know and give them a cup give each kid a bag that make them so happy the parents will be like oh my god it's cool and then like or like if say they just have pets like have some like dog treats in the truck or something i don't know i mean i'm just always trying to think of something to like just stand out and be different um, I think the hand lit written letters to every week to each client is going to be a solid one. People just love getting little letters and thank yous. And I mean, they just gave you hundreds of dollars for a service and they hired you and it should just go farther than the actual transaction. You know, it's, I see a lot of businesses just doing the transaction. They do a badass job. They do badass work and they're nice and they play. They get the money, never hear from them again until the next time they got to do work. And that's not going to get you much nowhere. So if you do these little things, like reach out to them, even after the work is done, showing you still care about them as a person, dude, they're constantly going to be referring you. Like they're constantly going to have so much nice things to say about you. Anytime anything some close comes up or like it, the topic doesn't even have to come up. They could just be like, they could just be like talking about their week to their the past week to their friends and being like, I just hired the nicest company. They're a small whole company. They just started. They are so awesome and blah, blah, blah. And then tell, they tell their friends and then their friends are like, oh, they did what? I got to try them out. You know, that's how it goes, man. So I got that. So, yeah, I broke down the pay. So I was doing the pay I was like, because I was thinking about exactly what my, this employee was asking. He was asking for 20 an hour. And I was like paying him 15 and I was already like struggling to pay him 15. And now the employee I have not paid 12, which is much more reasonable for the work we do. Um, and his level of expertise, he don't know much. He's kind of just like a, he really should be getting 10, but he's sticking it out right now and he's the only guy around. So I had to kind of show him I appreciate him. But um, let's see. So if you were to do time and a half for overtime and say we had 45 hour weeks, time and a half, so, so 45 hour week at $12 an hour is 570 bucks. 45 hour week at 15 an hour, 712. 45 hour week at 20 an hour, 950. So I wouldn't be damn near paying this guy twice as much. I was just like, dude, financially it makes no sense. And then to stay on top of the goals, I'd have to do 6,900 bucks a week versus 60, 6,100 bucks a week, something like that. So, dude, my pricing for the windows is what's badass, though. 
So I basically do four dollars for the exterior windows, eight is it seven or eight dollars for inside and out, and then twelve dollars for inside outside, and then deep cleaning out the tracks. And then here's where I get my extra little. This is my extra bonus is I don't include screens for any package. It's three dollars per screen cleaned, regardless. No ifs, ands, or buts. And um, it's an awesome decision I've made. Because I feel like that screen cleaning is like where my profit comes in. All the other money goes into it. And then say you clean 30 screens, it's 90 bucks there. Boom. I just got paid for the for the job, you know. Um, so for, dude, I had this road up way better somewhere else. Let me find it. Here it is. So, for the um, small homes, so zero to 22 panes, this also helps. I, I feel like it helps putting the price out there and in the open and being transparent because if you ever come across a client who's like sticker shocked or something, then... It's not as shocking and be like, man, my pricing is right on the web page. And, uh, you know, this is kind of like the averages or whatever. So, um, so you got a small home, zero to 22 panes, our minimum pricing, 89 for the basic, 179 for the deluxe, 269 for the premium. And then you got um, 22 to 37 panes, which would be a medium home. 149 for basic, 297 for deluxe, 449 for the premium. And then you got uh, 37 to 62 panes, so a large size home, 249 for the basic, 497 for deluxe, 749 for the premium. Then you got luxury homes, 62 to 87 panes, 39 for the basic, 699 for the deluxe, 997 for the premium. That's the goal, man. A thousand dollar home makes things way easy. You could just you just uh, schedule the job and you hit your goal for the day. So schedule the job plus the screen cleaning, you, you've hit your goal. It's genius. I got the window cleaning down. The pricing used to be so garbage. It was it was like. Well, you can look at the website. It's still there. I gotta get it. I gotta get that edited. To dead show. All right, guys. I was gonna do this till ten o'clock. Um, let me see if there's any questions I can answer real quick before I start my day. Um, just starting out. Haven't put out all my signs or flyers. Only have one vehicle. So how to work with wife's schedule? Two jobs done so far. Badass trap man power wash. Badass. Um, just keep on them flyers, man. If you ever got some downtime, just get them out. Take the massive action. Don't 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 wait for the perfect opportunity to do a door hanger. Just be like, man, I could hit some for like 20 minutes. You'd be surprised when you get done in 20 minutes. Do you pay your employee 10 W40? Isn't that I don't pay my employee in 10 W40? That's oil. What is he gonna do with a bunch of oil? <laughs> no, um, yeah, so I'm actually what I'm doing is I'm what I'm what I'm doing is I'm going and getting my insurance fixed and it sucks. It's going to be a lot of money. It's like two or three thousand bucks, but I'm going to get them. I'm going to get workman's comp for like up to 20K or something. So even if I have if I get more employees then they're covered with workman's comp, um, I shouldn't be posting about this on my channel, but what are the odds and I'm getting it corrected. But yeah, right now, technically my employees aren't covered under workman's comp. Um, what do you do in the winter when it's below freezing for long periods of time? Well, another thing I'm gonna work on with these brochures is I'm gonna get more commercial accounts and I'm gonna set up a schedule of bi-weekly or monthly cleanings for commercial accounts and just work on this window cleaning in the winter. And you can use wind, window cleaning fluid instead of water. or um, So windshield washer fluid in your car, you just use that instead of water. Mix it with GG4, 
that's what I use for my window cleaning solution. Um, and you're golden, the stuff don't freeze. Um, now, that being said, when I started my business, I had a bunch of commercial accounts, but I underbidded them in a desperate attempt to get work and take work and get a name growing and basically just to have pictures from my website, making it look like we do stuff. I didn't super underbid them, but I also took way too long to clean windows. Um, so, so if you guys notice fan club here, this is probably Scott Wagley, my employee. He's a little sour. He has nothing to do with his time. And this is the guy that's slandering my website and stuff. So anyway, um, <laughs> so what was I saying? Anyway, the winter thing, you um, you get your accounts made, or you get your accounts, but you gotta you gotta stick to it, man. It's really tough. It's really tough to stick to it when you don't have a CRM software put in place, and you just kind of tell them, "I'll be back every couple weeks," because it leaves it when you start a business, you have way too much. It's, 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 it's your rodeo, you know, like you can do what you want. So for me, at least when I, when I was telling customers, uh, cleaning windows and I just say, I'd be here every couple of weeks, um, and it would rain or something on their day. I like skip them for a week, you know, like, and I would, it was so messy. So the CRM software would keep everything on a reoccurring schedule weekly and you could keep everything, all your ducks in order, in order. But I'm just going to tell you now, when I was cleaning windows, I was way too much of a perfectionist. And I'd clean these windows at the commercial accounts so they'd be perfect, spotless, no drips, no, you know, the detailing was done, steel wool. These windows were perfect. And it, and it, what it taught me was I was, I was a badass window cleaner for residential. So residential, we were, we were good. So nonetheless, the commercial is a great way to train yourself for residential. Um, but also, so with the commercial, what, what I've also learned is windows don't have to be perfect. Uh, with your technique, you'll get them pretty perfect with your, as your technique increases, but the detailing doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to mark it until there's nothing, you know, just give it a quick wipe on the detailing and uh, it's commercial stuff. So it's going to get dirty as hell really quick. There's so much traffic. So just clean them on your next, you know, don't, don't spend all this just Mop it, clean it next. Mop it, clean it next. It's the only way you'll ever kind of make money with the commercial stuff. All right, I'm on to the next. Operation is locked. All right, peace out, guys. I got to get back to work.